right, so I would like to welcome you to this webinar that is going to go over, essentially the purpose of this webinar is to go over some things to make your practice unique and really can be applied to any business. Um, who I am, briefly, I'm a chiropractor, Dr. Mark Jagger. For those of you who don't know me already, um, basically I, what I started doing was I started building and developing my own protocols and devices to do exactly what it is that I'm talking about today, uh, to make myself unique in the marketplace. I had competition in my area, as all of us do, but I had a few guys who were very established in the neighborhood, and I was the new guy. And, uh, you know, I needed to make myself known. I needed to give people an option as to why they might come and see me if they were seeing somebody else for a number of years who they may or may not have been happy with. Um, I needed to, you know, to try to give them another option and make myself unique. Why do the same thing that your established competition has done in your neighborhood for years and years and years and years that they, you already know about? Um, why not do something a little different? That's a way to not only maybe take some of that market share, but also to you know, get the attention of a new market, um, a new segment of the market who maybe you know, thought chiropractic, in my case, was the thing that these other docs were doing, um, and maybe make them understand that we can do a little bit more. Um, and I gained a lot of success with that. I gained a lot of good reputation in my area. Um, a lot of patients knew me, um, still do. Um, because I worked on things that they didn't think chiropractors worked on. I did it in ways that the other guys weren't doing. I found out what they do and how they do it. And I just did something a little different. So in every business, this can be very valuable. In fact, you know, it's, it's the key it's you've seen, you know, how does, you know, Starbucks got a massive market share on coffee and what happens? Oh, and Tim Hortons has a massive market share on coffee. And then what happens? Oh, McDonald's now has McCafe. Why? Because they saw so much market that they weren't speaking to that Starbucks built an entire business upon. And it would be easy for them to just integrate something into their system to capitalize on that as well. And that's really what I'm talking about doing here. Um, <coughs> I needed something, excuse me, to be able to outwit and outsmart the competition and, you know, be different. Um, improvise, adapt, and overcome. This is really what I was, what I'm talking about here. Improvise something to adapt to the environment that you're in and overcome the obstacles that you are finding. So I'll also preface it by saying I'm not a seller. Um, sales is not a comfortable thing for me. Now I do, re, you know, I do understand the fallacy of what it is that I'm saying here because being in a business uh, and anything in life is, you know, a certain degree of sales, a certain degree of influence, a certain degree of not even that giving, you know, giving a patient or a prospective customer what they really want and need and explaining it to them in a way that, you know, that they, um, that they're going to understand. They're going to understand that they need what you have or better yet that they want what you have. Because sometimes, you know, you know, need isn't the best driver because they will make, you know, decisions as to what they need and what they don't need. But if they want it, then they'll usually find a way. So you have to make sure that, you know, you're the thing they want as well. So um, I've been an improviser my entire life. So as you can see, you know, by the background there, I've got some instruments on the wall. Um, I've been playing music for a long time. Uh, in fact, sometimes I'm actually even decent at it. Um, I play a lot by ear and I play a lot by improvisation. Uh, influences were, you know, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Hendrix, ZZ Top, uh, guitar rock, guitar and blues. There's a lot of improvisation in that. And it's a really fun process. When you're playing music, um, <clears throat> the improvisation is almost, it's soul fueling actually is what it is. Um, and in business can be like that too. If you have something that, you know, um, people want, if you have something that uh, you can create and the sky is the limit, how, for me, how exciting is that? Um, you know, I was just talking to somebody this morning about the whole mortgages going up and prices going up and, you know, um, 
interest rates going up. And I thought, wow, you know what? Um, if I'm in a position where I only make X dollars and that's all I make and those dollars that I need to spend exceed what I'm making because my income is fixed, that'd be a pretty stressful situation. I mean, it's stressful to begin with seeing the way things have gone, but like, you know, some of the payments on some of the stuff for some of the businesses have gone up by 300%. Um, the only saving grace of all of it for me is the fact that um, I can work harder, I can sell more, I can do more, and I can make more. So I can dig myself out of this hole if I work hard enough. That's liberating. That's empowering. That's something that we need to realize as business owners that we have a lot to offer. Uh, we have a lot of great opportunities and a lot of freedom that other people may not have. And we're lucky for that. Um, all we got to do is work a little harder, work a little smarter, learn a little more, use a few different tools. And this is kind of what I want to teach you uh, today. Um, my goal is to teach you and give you some tools that maybe you can use to think about doing what you do in a different way, adding to what you do, uh, packaging what you do in a different way that will attract a different segment of the population, excite a part of the population that you already have the attention of that may want to come and use what you do and ultimately use your business to give you more freedom because that's what you want. From a doctor's perspective, I want clinical freedom. I want to be able to do you know, what I want to do with the patients. I want to be able to choose what I think is right for each of these patients because this, I'm a problem solver. It's really cool to be able to do that every day. This is the problem a patient has. We have 10 different things that we can do that will help contribute to their well-being and to their healing. And I'm going to try one, two, three, combination of all of them to get the patient where they need to go because I know of all these tools that I can use and I can help them. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty cool thing for me. So the clinical freedom to be able to do what you want to do with the patient. Um, financial freedom, because as I say, you can increase your business with some of these little tricks and, and tips, and you can make more to give yourself some financial freedom. And what does that financial freedom give you ultimately uh, is life freedom. Uh, to be able to take a holiday every once in a while, to be able to, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> go out for breakfast without worrying about the bill, um, to be able to do the things that you want to do and not be concerned about restriction. Um, holidays is a big thing, taking a holiday. I had not taken a holiday in a number of years in my practice because if my hands were not in the practice, my practice was not running. So um, I needed to be able to have a little bit more freedom because not just for me, but my family. My family was getting a little upset with the fact that I never took holidays and that I was never there on Saturdays and all these different things. And it does affect your family life. So I would like other people in businesses and especially my own profession to be able to have a little bit of freedom that I didn't realize I could have by doing things the right way. So if I can help you do things a little bit differently, the right way, um, give you a little extra freedom, then, you know, I'm, uh, I humbled, I'm humbled for the opportunity to be able to do that for you. So that's really what I want to teach you today. Um, <laughs> in the sales front of things, I never wanted to sell care to a patient. Um, I always thought it'd be perfect if they already got to me, you know, knowing that they wanted what I had to offer. Um, because that right there is the key. Be what they want from the start. And then there's very little selling, um, you know, be the obvious or in my case, only choice because nobody else can give them what I give them. So this is kind of why I built the devices and constructed the protocols that I had constructed um, to be different, to be the only choice, to be the obvious choice. Um, 
if I'm the only choice, you know, I always like to say a monopoly isn't a bad thing if you own that monopoly. So if you are the only game in town that does a specific thing, then there are some pretty distinct benefits you get from having that advantage. So um, that's why we're talking about what we're talking about here. That's That's what we're talking about. That's why we're talking about it. There are solutions that can make you stand out from other businesses uh, that are just doing the same old thing that can give you the freedom that uh, you can't enjoy without doing those things. So um, <clears throat> for us, for chiropractors, especially if we're adjustment centric, our hands are in the practice. And if your hands leave the practice, the practice leaves the building. That means no holidays. That means being tied down. That means the no freedom. Um I was forced to take a two week holiday one time um, after I'd already started using devices. So let's be real clear too. After I started using these tricks, some of the things that I'm going to teach you here, I still didn't realize that it could give me freedom. It still didn't realize that I could actually take holidays and things would run without me being there. <clears throat> forced to take this two week holiday. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I found out when I came back, the targets were met, financial, numbers, and I wasn't there for half the month. So I was like, wow, you know what? I can actually do this sometimes. I can take a couple of weeks off and I won't lose everything over those two weeks. So that's another thing that this type of freedom, these type of things can can give you. Um, so let's get into that. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of what it is I want to teach you. Um, three ways that you can become unique and set yourself up for freedom. Three things are you can talk about what you do in different ways. So change the message. And I'm going to go through details of how we can do that. You can combine things you already do, create new programs, package them differently, communicate them differently. You can also add new technology and new skills, or as we put it, new lanes of service. Those are the three things that you can do. Now, let's talk about some examples of talking about what you already do in new ways. And these are things that, you know, you might even want to just add today. These are things you can do right away with doing nothing different than just changing your message and the way you present it. So when I first got into practice, uh, a chiropractor told me, that if I rented a room, got a table, and started advertising my services, I could do that alone and people would come into my office. Um, I believed that at the time. And, you know, probably good I did believe that because that's exactly what I did. Rented a room, got a table, got some equipment, and it was in a medical center. My only saving grace that there was traffic from the medical center. Um, took me a month to realize that if I sit there, nobody's going to come in. I need to go out and talk to people. I need to get in the community. Community. I need to be seen at community events. I need to do advertising. It's something that a lot of us don't like to do, um, but it's essential. And the message as you do that is essential. So I'm a chiropractor that adjusts spines and my office is at X and at one, two, three main street and come and see me. Doesn't work. Sadly, because, you know, in chiropractic college, I was told that that would work. Um, I started seeing patients because of the medical center, but that's all. Um, in fact, the family doctor at the medical center didn't even realize that I could do more wonders with lumbar spines for about a year. I figured she'd assume that I was a chiropractor and I treat back. She saw a couple of her patients that I did wonders with shoulders. So she started sending me a bunch of shoulders. Then she pulled me aside and said, hey, um, I've got this patient with a low back problem. He's got a disc injury. Can you do anything for that? What? I didn't say this, but this was in my head. I'm a chiropractor. I've been working with you for a year. You don't realize that I treat backs? And I realized it was my message. I hadn't communicated it. I hadn't communicated it in a way that would click for the family doctor or that would click for her patients. So um, I started presenting myself differently. 
I started saying, hey, um, I'm a chiropractor that has treated a patient with a lumbar disc injury. And here's what we did. We adjusted. We did this modality, that modality. We did acupuncture and the patient got better. Oh, wow. Instead of I'm a chiropractor and adjust backs, patient thinking, you know, oh, well, I have a back problem and then walking in the other direction. The little bit more detail that I gave lumbar disc injury. Oh, that's the cause of my back pain. That's what clicked for the patient. So a little bit more detail, enough that it triggers something in that patient's mind that, and the family doctor's mind in this case, that gives them the idea that that's what I got. So that's what this person does. That is the connection. That makes all the difference. Um, another one, I do acupuncture for insomnia. I do acupuncture. Doesn't say much. Oh, great. I, you do acupuncture. I don't know what I'd use acupuncture for. Just like chiropractic. If I don't know much about chiropractic, I don't know what I'd use chiropractic for. I said I communicated that I do acupuncture for insomnia. Um, I had six rooms, six tables uh, with music. What I do is I take six patients at a certain period of time, four o'clock uh, in the afternoon. I'd play their relaxing music. I would do the acupuncture, set up in about 15 points that I was setting up on the patient, lay them on their back, let them have a 30-minute nap with the acupuncture and the music. Essentially, what I was trying to do is calm down the parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system, try to get them to relax. Um, that helped a lot of people with insomnia. And if I hadn't communicated that that's what I use it for, then they wouldn't have got it. Or another phrase that I really like is I saw at chiropractic college one time. Um, do you have back pain that goes away, but that, that won't go away or keeps coming back? Do you have back pain? One phrase. If it was left at that, they wouldn't have got much response. And I actually tested this out with ads. Do you have back pain? I treat back pain. Doesn't work. Do you have back pain that doesn't go away or keeps coming back. Almost everybody is in that boat. I, do I have back pain now? Do you have back pain that won't go away? Yes, I have back pain now that won't go away. Or keeps coming back. Yeah, I have episodes with it all the time. You've spoken to two segments of the population right there with those that phrasing. And that's what gets them interested. That person knows what it is that I'm dealing with. Um, pro adjuster. Pro adjuster. Um, we have one in our office and something brilliant that they've done, balance. That's a whole new segment of the population. Do I use ProAdjuster? Yes. Do I use it for balance? Do I advertise that I help people with balance? I should be because that's the specific problem that they're dealing with. So there you go. Talking about things in different ways, even though we all know we do chiropractic, I do acupuncture, I do ProAdjuster. I need to isolate what it is I do with each of those things to make the patient understand that I treat the thing they're having problems with. Um, one very recent thing, another example, and I'm just trying to give you examples because I'm hoping maybe that it'll click a little bit in your head as to how you can change maybe your message. It might not be the things that I'm speaking about, but it might be things that are related or it might be, you know, um, things that you do that you can change the um message with slightly talk about a problem in the community that you have that you solve i have a situation that just happened actually yesterday had a patient that went to the hospital for an mri sorry went to the hospital with a knee problem and they i told them to get an ultrasound because I figured what it was was uh, a ligam ligament injury. Anatomically, that's what it looked like. Me um, mechanisms of injury, that's what it looked like. Orthopedic testing wise, that's what it looked like. Um, swelling over medial collateral ligament, the ligament in the knee. And the first thing the doctor says to the patient is, oh, it's probably a meniscus problem. You need an MRI for that. Ultrasound won't tell us anything. Well, then what exactly does ultrasound do is what my response was. This blows my mind because I guess ultrasound is completely useless because you can't use ultrasound, apparently, according to this doctor, to see soft tissue injury. It's exactly what ultrasound is for. 
yes, an MRI is better. But in the current community that I live in, you can't get MRIs very easily. So the next best thing is an ultrasound to isolate where the issue is. I kind of know where it is, but good to have confirmation as well. So not only did this doctor probably have the diagnosis wrong because they just don't understand the anatomy as well as, as we do. In my perspective, he didn't care enough to actually do the ultrasound. He wanted just this patient to go home, wait for an MRI, because, you know, chances are 80% of it will heal within the three months it takes to get that MRI anyways. And if it's something that bad, then they'll all sit isolated at the MRI. And then they'll take another three months to get to the specialist. And by that time, that patient's life, the quality of life is shot. The fact that the doctor can't see that coming, the fact that the doctor, I don't know, in my opinion, I guess doesn't really care that that might happen. I do, I do because I've seen it happen. I've seen people get on necrotic medications that are addicted to them, all because of things like this, where the doctor, the first person that saw them didn't care enough to do the right thing, or even worse, maybe isn't smart enough to do the right thing. That's even a whole other scary bag of worms that could be the problem. Um, in any event, what I did was the patient came into me after we did acupuncture and we did laser and we did a little bit of the pro adjuster on her. We flushed out the inflammation, which is what I figured was the problem with the ligament. Um, she felt a lot better the next day. If she'd have gone home and waited for the MRI three months, what do you think that trajectory would be? Now, maybe not with everybody. A lot of people are inquisitive enough to go and take that extra step and go for treatment. But how many people don't do that? A lot of people don't do that. Now, I guess I've gotten on a soapbox here. But what I did in response to that was put out an ad saying, are you waiting in line for a specialist appointment? And if you are, then maybe I have a solution for you. That way you don't have to wait six months to find out that there's nothing they can do for you. And then you end up coming here anyways. Come here now. So I'm seeing a problem in this community where we can't get an MRI and we don't have a doctor that either has the knowledge enough or cares enough to send them to the right place quickly to, so they can get the help that they need quickly so it doesn't affect their lives in other ways. I'm speaking to those people, speaking to them in a different way so they know that there is a solution and I'm putting them to, it to them in a way that they can understand that they have an option. They don't have to go home and wait. So that's the first thing you can do. Change your message to speak to a population that needs your help. Number two, you can combine things that you already do into new programs and new methods. Now, what I did was laser and decompression. I did laser and I did decompression. Laser for the soft tissue injury to relax inflammation, reduce pain, soften up muscle tissue that was tight and compressing everything in the spine. And then I did decompression afterwards to stretch and relax and to take pressure off the area that I'd relaxed with the laser. Now, I started doing this very early on, early 2000s, early to mid 2000s. There weren't a lot of people using that technology together for a purpose, um, for a, com a combined technology for a single purpose. So I came up with a treatment plan called laser enhanced spinal decompression. I had a lot of doctors copy and paste my site, my website started doing similar things. I was using a handheld laser and a decompression machine worked phenomenally. And you know, what worked even well was packaging it in the right way to make patients understand what it is that we did. Laser enhanced spinal decompression, laser decompression. The term that puts it together is enhanced to the patient. It's a brand new treatment. To a practitioner, it's what I'm doing anyways, packaged in a way that the patient can understand why it will help. Um, that made us so busy, it was unbelievable. Um, and it was just a little bit of a marketing change. I started getting patients that were doing decompression elsewhere. Um, most of the clinics at the time weren't using laser together. A lot of them started using laser together because I started doing it. They started copying and pasting the website, as I mentioned, and I had doctors actually all over the world that I saw stuff I wrote for my website showing up, copied and pasted on theirs. 
some people might be upset about that. Um, I thought it was cool because that means my knowledge and my packaging of this is going to help people I'll never meet. And it's going to help doctors treat more patients. And that's really what I care about. I don't care so much that some of my material was used by someone else because if that material is helpful, then why do I want to hoard it? Um, and I knew that I was going to do something else anyways. I knew that I was going to build a device that, you know, we'll talk about a little bit later. Laser and shockwave. <laughs> this is another thing that we package. Um, shockwave and actually pro adjuster, pro soft. This is another thing we use. Um, laser opens up the circulation and software, or sh sorry, uh, shockwave pro adjuster. We can use the vibration from that to actually flush it out. So you look at it clinically as, well, if I have laser that dilates blood vessels, and then you have a mechanical instrument that pushes the inflammation and the circulation through those increased blood vessels, you have a situation where you can flush inflammation out of an area and larger blood vessels can bring new circulation into the area to nourish and to heal. It's like uh, looking at it as a, you know, explain it to patients as you have a highway, you have a two lane road and you get rid of that two lane road and put in a six lane road. Two lane road can only carry so much traffic. So you get congestion. If it all, all of a sudden becomes six lanes, then you have less congestion, congestion and you can handle more traffic. In the case of circulation, you can get rid of the inflammation. You can put new circulation in there to heal the area. That's why laser itself opens up the circulation. Shockwave or Pro Adjuster Pro Soft can actually vibrate the tissue to influence the circulation physically. Um, no magic. Lots of people are doing those two things together. They're just not explaining it to the patient in that way. Um, decompression with the knee. Same thing. We do a lot of that. Um, we do decompression, same laser increasing circulation and increasing. I believe it's actually increasing the secretion um, of synovial fluid inside the joint because patients always find that their knees are better lubricated when we've done decompression and laser flushes out inflammation, reduces heat, reduces tissue irritation. I explained that we get um, fluid out of the knee uh, not only that, but we also get synovial fluid circulating around the surfaces. So if you have a lot of inflammation in the knee, inflammation is a water consistency. Synovial fluid or joint oil is an oil consistency. If you have oil in your engine, or if you have water in your engine, it's not lubricated well and the engine's going to blow. If you have water in your knee, it's not lubricated very well, it's going to irritate the joint. If you have oil in your knee, which can circulate better with the decompression and the laser, then you have a better lubricated knee, less in you know, less irritation, less injury. It feels better. It functions better. Lots of people do decompression. Lots of people do laser. Lots of people do knee decompression. You package it together to actually be able to put those two things together and communicate it in a way. Now, I'll also say that I have a lot of this stuff together already. I have information sheets on why this works and how this works. If there's anything that you need in watching this or that you want help with, even want to do a quick call or a long call even um, about how, you know, you could package things you do or maybe add things that you uh, add, add new things. I'm always open to that. And I have some stuff that I can, you know, some office signs, some, um, some funnels that you can use. Uh, and that stuff is all, you know, I can, I can uh, give you all that stuff. Uh, that's part of, you know, Coming on this webinar, uh, that's some of what I'd like to give you along with the cheat sheet notes for everything I'm talking about. Um, so laser and pro adjuster, another thing, uh, as I was talking about. So um, that's number two. So we've gone through, talk about things that you're doing in a little bit of a different way. Number two, combine things you already do for new programs and new methods. Now, number three, number three is kind of where I my sweet spot is. I designed a new device. I've designed two new devices actually that um, <clears throat> to make myself different and unique and anything. Laser and decompression was the thing that I did. I have a robotic laser enhanced spinal decompression table. I sunk a class four laser into a decompression table that we build and we do the two simultaneously on the lumbars 
and we can do them simultaneously on the neck with another bit of a mechanism that I include with it. Um, we do hips, hip decompression, and we do knee decompression. So these are things as well that no other device, I wanted the capabilities in this device to do hips, to do knees, to do backs, and no other device on the planet could do that. So I designed and built something that could do that. So adding something like that to your practice is a way that you can get a new lane of service in and do a whole bunch of things that nobody else can do. Um, and that's really where my sweet spot is. Uh, I love being able to do things that nobody else can do. And so I built the device to be able to do that. We have a, a neuropathy device coming out as well, which is a um, microcurrent foot bath combined with uh, low-level laser therapy. Another thing that when a patient comes into your office and sees you do something that nobody else in the community does or something they've never seen before, they're excited. They want to learn more about it. And your credibility just went up because you're doing the new cool thing that they've never seen before that looks interesting, is effective, and looks innovative. Um, so that's something adding new things can do. Um, and it can be anything. Like, of course, my sweet spot is laser and decompression and neuropathy. Um, red light beds are really big right now. Um, acupuncture, do acupuncture. Uh, nutrition, selling supplements or nutritional advice. Weight loss, this has been a big one. Uh, Chirothin, I will drop a little, uh, a little mention here. Um, Chirothin's been amazing. I've never wanted to get into weight loss because I could never, I never wanted to, I never wanted to do anything that I couldn't guarantee would work that I couldn't. I never wanted to do anything that I couldn't guarantee results from. So I tried Chirothin myself and I dropped 26 pounds in about four weeks. And honestly, I wasn't following. Sorry, uh, Doc J, if you're watching right now, uh, sorry, I didn't follow it completely, but I, think or any other Cairo thin the doctors that are watching. Uh, yeah, I didn't follow it completely. Um, but it worked. I dropped the weight I needed to drop. I want to drop more. I'm going to do it again. But I added it to my office because I have a whole bunch of patients who can benefit from it. It's another lane of service. It's a segment of the population that you're not speaking to right now. Kind of like that McDonald's Starbucks example. People weren't going to McDonald's for their cappuccino and latte. It's a whole population segment that loves getting fancy coffee that couldn't get it at McDonald's. So McDonald's starts to offer it. And now they can get it there. They're coming there for food anyways, whether they should or shouldn't be is another debate here. But another lane of service to a population that may not have come in your door otherwise. Chirothin has been a great thing for that. Um, and the results speak for themselves. Um, as a business as well, there's so many things you can do with it. Um, a lot of people are adding red light beds uh, and or, you know, cool sculpting, things like that to their Chirothin program. That's something that we've started to do. Um, packaging them together because that population may want a number of other different services that help them get to their goal. Um, new niches, speaking to new parts of the population mean new patients. And that's what we want. That's what we need. Um, so we've got the three. We've got talking about things in a new way to taking the things that you already do, putting them together, new messaging. We've got new technology that give you new skills, new capabilities, and new lanes of service. I will say that if anyone wants to talk about those things, that I'm always available for a call. I'm always available to help you whether it's with something that I do or whether it's just simply advice, because really what this is, um, I'm out here to help people. I'm up here, out here to help docs. I'm help, here to help doctors make, help more patients. I'm going to give you one extra little bonus marketing angle that I've used a fair bit to gain a lot of attention. Do a study. Now, I haven't done it in a while. We're starting up a new thing where we're going to be doing that uh, again, but Early on, I publicized that I'm going to do a study with decompression and laser. And what we did was we took um, 
took the disability index, visual analog scale, a few basic little assessment tools, combined it with orthopedics to quantify what it is we were doing. And we advertised that. We're going to do a study. Um, we want to quantify what's going on here. If you've been, you've got these problems that we work on, back pain, neck pain, come in and here's your treatment plan. We gave them a little bit of a break on the treatment plan because they're participating in a study. Um, you know, there's a lot of things you can do with that. You could give them a complimentary pillow if they, you know, or anything else that you provide, a complimentary massage, things you can sort of, you know, work in there to give them a little bonus for helping you out. Um, because obviously, you know, you're not going to do the whole thing for free. Um, but these incentive, incentives, if you finish your 20 session program, then you get this. That's what, you know, it gets them in for that 20, uh, 20 session program. It improves their retention because I have to make sure that I come in for treatments or I'm going to wreck up. I'm going to wreck the doc's you know, uh, results. And um, we advertised that. We got a lot of business off of it. Uh, it was great. And it's a technique, you know, I did with decompression and laser. You can do, um, I've seen doctors do cervical adjusting and thyroid function. Uh, that could be something with weight loss that, you know, you're getting adjusted, you're doing chirothin. Um, is there a difference between somebody getting adjusted and doing the chirothin or just doing the chirothin alone? Or, you know, are the results better? Uh, or did they lose more weight? Um, are there adjustments? You know, another one is people who lose weight and how they can, you know, do their adjustment holds better. Adjustments hold better. Are they easier to adjust? All these different things that you can you can package together to, you know, from your perspective, you're actually learning, right? You're learning about what you can put together and what the effects are. And you can use some assessment tools to, <coughs> excuse me, to, uh, to quantify this stuff. But again, all of this, it's in the message. Make a unique message, something specific, something people will understand, something that will grab a little bit of attention. I'm a doctor, I'm a chiropractor that does decompression. Doesn't tell me much. I'm a chiropractor that does decompression for someone with an L5-S1 disc herniation that gives them pain in their right leg. Oh, I've got that. I should go to this doctor. That's the difference right there. That's the big difference. Imagine also using that research as your success stories. Imagine stringing those success stories together on your wall or in your advertis advertisements. You did this and you can prove that you did it. That's a winning resume for any patient that's considering your care or success stories are a winning resume for any business that is considered or any person that's considering using your business. And I've even launched my device successfully with the study. Initially, we were doing a study on how well it worked versus doing decompression and laser separately. And we found for the record that it did work better. It was more comfortable. It was faster. It took less labor. There's a whole bunch of things that we can get into regarding that, but um, it gives credibility to what you're doing, gives you something to broadcast, gives you a reason to announce it along the way, gives you a way to approve retention, um, gives you a reason to offer incentives, might give you a study to publish as well. On that angle with uh, studies, uh, I'll let you know a little bit about something that we're putting together is um, a few of our docs have had very good success with before and after x-rays and before and after MRIs. We actually have some material now that shows unequivocal resolution of disc injuries with using the spine specialist robotic laser enhanced spinal decompression system and a increase of disc height on x-ray along with resolution of anterolisthesis, which I think is super, super exciting because the anterolisthesis and disc height, I mean, it's the ideal, ideal situation. If you can reduce things like that, I mean, the disc bulges as well, but in Canada right now, you know, it's harder to get an MRI, as I mentioned, um, easier to get x-ray. 
a lot of the stuff we do is, you know, I do in my office is based off x-ray, it's based off spinal position, based off curve, based off measured disc height, space between the bones. If we can show an increase in space between the bones and a change in position, especially with something like an anterosthesis, just briefly, you lose disc space. There's a disc between the bones. You lose disc space. What happens? The outside of the disc becomes floppy, like a tire that has no air in it. If you can increase the space, increase the hydration of the disc, it becomes taut again. So there's not a lot of translation ability here. So um, that's something that is huge. That is something that is very exciting from my perspective, because this device that I designed and manufacture and provide for other doctors is doing things that I haven't seen other devices do um, all that often, not predictably. So um, yeah, so that's something that we're going to start pushing ahead with a little bit more um, study related things. And that's going to increase the retain uh, patient retaining in our office. That's going to increase the, that's going to increase the amount of patients that want to come in because let's face it, you know, a lot of people get excited when they hear that they're going to be participating in something bigger than themselves. And that's really what we do in our practice, right? Um, we're participating in something bigger than just ourselves. We're helping patients. When we help that patient that has a chronic pain issue, um, seen it time and time again, patient comes in, they're in a bad mood, they're in pain, they're not nice to their family, not nice to their kids, can't play with their kids, not nice to their spouse, uh, in a general bad mood, sometimes not even nice to us. Um, they get out of pain. Life changes completely. I had a, a patient a number of years ago when we started using the robotic decompression table, disc injury had been everywhere. Um, he actually, you know, walked in with the kid, kid had his phone, kid was playing video games. They didn't talk to each other. He was crabby. He was getting on the table in a lot of pain. They left. They didn't say much. About two months into the treatment plan, he runs into the office with the daughter on his shoulder, runs her down the hall. They're laughing their heads off. They're talking, they're chattering. Quite frankly, they were disturbing the office a little bit, but I was like, wow, two months ago, this guy wasn't even talking to his kid because he was so cranky and in pain. Now he's fireman carrying the kid down the office hallway, running, laughing, engaging with his child because he's not in pain anymore. That's the big picture. That's what offering new services, offering different things, communicating different things in different ways to get patients into your office, because it doesn't really matter how they get into the office. If you just got to find the right message or communicate a different message that gets a different patient in, because we all know that we have things that will help people. That That's a, that's a given that there's no debate there. Um, <clears throat> they just need to know. They just need to be told and presented the right message that gives them the impetus to come into the office. That's why changing your message is important. That's why having a different message, that's why getting to different populations, using different services, the weight loss population, coming in and seeing what you do as a chiropractor that would never have seen what you do as a chiropractor had they not come in for weight loss. That's just a real powerful thing. And if you can change your message to be able to make that happen, you're serving more people. You're helping more people. You're changing more lives. That's really what it boils down to. So let's talk about changing lives. So why I developed the device that I have um, I've mentioned the scenario, improvise, adapt, and overcome. I had a business that was doing a certain thing. I needed to improvise some things to improve my business. I needed to adapt new things like a new device. Some people don't go that far. Some people use the first two steps and talk about things a little bit differently and do things they already do. Some people go to that third step and want to include something new something cool, something nobody else has that can help patients in ways nothing else can. Um, I went to the length of actually building something so I could help doctors do more of that with more patients. 
because to me, I love what I do in my practice. I love treating patients. I love being there every day. Well, the days I am there, seeing the look on a patient's face when they get better. I love that. That's, that's something we all love as practitioners, getting results, helping people. I looked at this device thing as, well, this is a way that I can use a little bit of, you know, eclectic knowledge that I have to build something new that helps in different ways that can help doctors help more patients in different ways. So each and every device that I get out there, it's inspiring to me because I know that patients I never meet, that I'll never get the chance to meet, will be helped in ways that they couldn't have been helped without my idea and my action and you know my conviction to get it into the hands of doctors who can do a lot of good work with it. Now, that conviction has led me to a few different other things. Realizing the fact that devices, you know, medical devices cost a lot of money to build. They cost a lot of money to manufacture. They cost a lot of money for the doctor to buy. So I have a number of different options that I use. Um, and this is all along the lines of changing the message to speak to the person in the right way, to meet them where they are at. Someone uh, that we all know uses that phrase a lot. Um, meet patients where they're at. Me, I like to meet the doctor where they're at. So I know a lot of docs are comfortable buying equipment. I know that other doctors would be comfortable with business partnerships. And we offer those two options with respect to our devices. We offer business partnerships. We offer straight purchases. Those two things are ways that I can help this device get into the hands of doctors that will do phenomenal work with it. Why? Because I want to affect the lives of your patients. I want that patient that's coming into you right now that doesn't have a solution for their disc pain to have a new solution for their disc pain. You might be a decompression doc already. You might be a pro adjuster doc already. You might be a laser or a shockwave doc already. Even if you are all of those things, having a new piece of technology, having a decompression table that does back, neck, hips, and knees. Yes, we also do hips and knees. I've engineered it to do that um, because I wanted to help patients with hip problems and knee problems in ways that other doctors could not do. I want to play a role in helping a patient in your office with that by being able to offer a new, exciting, interesting, highly capable piece of technology and type of therapy that they don't have to have access to right now. That really is my only goal, to help people that I'll never see, to know that I've, know that I've done that. So that's why we offer a number of different ways for doctors at a number of different levels to be able to work with us. I want to work with doctors that want to help patients just the same way I do. So, and maybe this isn't for you, you're watching and maybe you're thinking, well, you know what, I've already got a whole bunch of different equipment, or maybe I'm not interested in equipment, but I know somebody who this would be perfect for. Um, that's great too. I'm not necessarily, you know, looking for you specifically to partner with us, but maybe I am. If it's not for you, there may be somebody that you know that you think this will be perfect for. So please pass this along to that person as well, because the effect of that isn't a business selling more devices. Now, I know that is one of the goals of device sales. However, being the doctor, being the one whose face is attached to this specific device, my real goal is to help doctors that want to help more patients. Um, that's number one right there. Um, I want to work with doctors that are patient centered and want to do more for the patients that they serve. If you're that person, that's great. If someone, you know, is that person, that's great too, <clears throat> because at the end of the day, passing that word along just helps more people. And that's a beautiful thing. So I'd like to finish this off with a quote. This quote is, to get something you've never had, you have to do something you have never done. So there are a number of things you might want. <clears throat> Excuse me. You may want more practice freedom. You may want more clinical freedom. You may want more financial freedom. 
In order to get that, you have to do some new things. It may be the first two steps of what I've taught here, which is to talk about what you do differently or to take things that you already do and package them differently. Those are great methods. That's what I initially started to do. They work phenomenally well. I'll preface this also by saying, if you need any help trying to come up with some strategies where you could do that, my door is always open and my phone is always on. Maybe not at three in the morning, but you, you get the picture. Um, I would always be available to help. And maybe it's just consulting on, you know, a piece of equipment that you're thinking of getting that <clears throat> you want a little bit more information on something I do or something I don't do. Um, I have a fair bit of experience, <laughs> excuse me, with colds and with um, equipment all across the market. I know a lot about all the different companies that provide it. I know a lot of ins and outs. Um, I've developed my products to, to deal with some of the shortcomings of others. And there are some products as well that are very, very effective and that um, employed in your practice will do a lot of good for a lot of patients and a lot of good for your business. And I'd be happy to consult whether it's a product of mine or, you know, you, you thought of someone else's product and you want to know if it's going to work and what you're going to expect to see and how you can deploy it. I'm very, very willing to help you provide, help provide any of that feedback. So, but just do that. Just do it. Um, not stealing from Nike here. I challenge you to keep doing these things that you've never done because if you've never had a laser in your practice before and you think it might help people, you're right. Modalities in a practice, our hands are great. Chiropractic is great. Adjusting is great. Modalities add that extra for the patients who need the extra. And that's where it becomes important. So keep expanding your knowledge, keep expanding your techniques, keep learning more, keep doing more, keep taking chances here and there to do a new thing that might scare you. That's in life in general, but um, that's where the growth occurs. That's where your growth occurs. Adding something new or doing something different in your practice, that's also where growth occurs. So do different things. If you want different, you're never going to get different doing the same stuff that you already do. So do something new. If I can help you with that, I'm absolutely available to do that. Like I say, we even partner with clinics to do that. That's how committed that I am to getting results for doctors so they can get results for patients. I have partnership programs. So I'm in it with you because all I care about is making sure you do well so your patients can do well. Of course, there's a revenue thing. You can make good money offering new services and new technologies. Absolutely, absolutely. That all comes with patient results as well. So I'll put a link up to the cheat sheet, a written cheat sheet, <laughs> excuse me. I'll put a link up to the cheat sheet that you can download and or I can send it to you. So you have a stepwise instructional writing as to how you can employ these type of things. I'll have my contact information. You can always book an appointment with me to clarify any of the information or to get some ideas about what you can do in your practice. And if you're interested in a partnership or you're interested in adding new technology or you know someone who is, please feel free to pass this on. Um, I thank you. That doctor thanks you. Those patients thank you. We thank you for being on this call. Thank you for employing any of the knowledge you get on this call. And uh, thank you for what you do, because it means a lot to a lot of people. Let's talk soon. <laughs>